All right, the Minding Your Business podcast is brought to you by Brooks Brothers Consulting Incorporated. Brooks Brothers was started by myself and my brother, Philip. Shout out to Philip in 2013. And we provide leadership, talent development, coaching for new and existing executives, directors, and managers. If you find yourself in a new role, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We help drive your critical thinking and inspire you to achieve success in your role, whether that's with an organization, a Fortune 500 company, a nonprofit, or within your own company. Visit us at www.brooksbrothersconsulting.com. Again, that's www.brooksbrothersconsulting.com, and you can email us at info at brooksbrothersconsulting.com. Today is February the 8th, 2018. I am greatly excited for today's special guest that I'm going to introduce shortly. But first, let's get the music going. Turn it up. What we do here is go back, 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 back. So again, today is Tuesday, February the 8th, 2018, and you may be wondering, you know, why I'm doing a show today or a podcast. I normally come on Fridays at noon, but I just, I was so excited to, to be here with my guy that I went on and jumped a day early, and uh, I wanted to make sure that I got this in because it was really important and critical for me. And so this is really epic for me. Uh, so I was excited. I was driving down here. I, you know, I almost ran off the expressway. I was so excited trying to get here. Uh, so sorry for the lady in the white truck uh, <laughs> on 240. Uh, she probably thinks I need to have my license revoked probably. But I'm your host, Ron Brooks. This is the Minding Your Business podcast. So glad that you could join us. And listen, I don't want to give any delay um, because I'm actually here in the office with someone that um, has great respect, not only from me, but from many in this community and kind of around this country as um, uh, this young man has built his business and his brand uh, over time. And so I'm not going to allow him to be modest today because we have to make sure as champions and as a titan um, that we're supporting him uh, for what he does in supporting this community. Um, a great dynamic speaker, great business owner, um, very authentic, and a great speaker, and just an overall great man and brother. I want to welcome Mr. Jason Daniels with Titans Electrical, uh, Titan Success Academy, Home of the Hustle, and a number of different businesses and platforms that he leads and guides and influences. So thank you so much, De- Jason. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me come on. Well, we got an audience. <laughs> yeah, we got the audience, man. They're clapping for you, man. That's what they do. I'm trying to make sure we're showing enough attention. We got several cameras going, man. We're yeah. live on several platforms, and we're doing the podcast. So thanks so much for having me on, man. Yeah. We're just going to jump right in, chop yeah. it up. Ron's going to dig in a little bit and get some questions answered, and hopefully uh, whoever's listening and watching can grab some nuggets that they can apply to their life and their business because we're here to help you with the podcast with the lives uh with every outlet that we have we just want to provide a value to what you guys have going on in your life and make ourselves accessible uh to any questions or or anything that you've got going on so yeah absolutely definitely great things uh there jason and so just to jump in uh you know for those that aren't if they've been hiding under a rock and maybe they're not quite familiar with what you do and who you are maybe just give the people a quick nugget as to who jason daniels is well, uh, Jason Daniels is, is ever-changing, ever-evolving, <laughs> ever-growing. Exactly. Um, you know, I, I guess uh, the reason 
you probably know who I am is because I started a, a business called Titans Electrical uh, a little over six years ago. I uh, put my foot on the gas. Uh, I decided I wanted to start a business. I realized that uh, the reason I had never succeeded at much was because I never, uh, I, I didn't respond well with authority. I kind of wanted to do things my own way. And when yeah. you go into somebody else's establishment and just grab it and start doing things your own way, you know, sometimes they show you the door. Uh, <laughs> so I decided, that you know, I'm like, hey, man. I know how to fix this. I'm going to start my own business. Well, what am I going to sell? You know, that, that becomes the issue. What are you going to sell? Right. Um, what do people want from me? What can I provide to my community? Uh, I had an electrical knowledge. Uh, I also knew of the competition or the climate that I would be playing in sure. uh, and knew that the people that I came up working for uh, – never really catered to the customer the way that, that I could. I knew that I could provide a value uh, because I'm a great communicator. I can listen to someone's problems right. and then lay out option A, B, and C instead of just, hey, here's what you got to do. Here's your estimate. See you later. I have plenty of people still today that tell me, hey, you weren't the cheapest guy when we got all our numbers together, but you're the one who came in. It seemed like you cared. We felt like you would walk with us through this project and you explained more to us than anybody else. So the value that I could provide in this uh, industry yes. was what pushed me into that spot, which is why you know me because I put my foot on the gas. I doubled in size every year. Uh, and what I experienced last year is that when you drive like that, when you when you go no brakes and you put your foot on the gas, uh, you know sometimes you crash. Sure. Um, yep. Going from one million dollars to two million dollars is going from a mom and pop shop to a legit corporation. There you go. And with no prior business knowledge, uh, last year was a big learning experience for me. Uh, I had made every other jump uh, fairly easy, mm -hmm. uh, and last year's jump was uh, was tough. Uh, you know, I, I, I took some licks. And, and so I'm on here today to be transparent. You said you want to talk about failure. Yeah. I've got tons of experience with failure, and I guarantee you I'm, I'm still breathing, so I'm not done failing. There you go. Uh, but we got to fail to succeed, right? Uh, yeah. We're in the game. And when you're in the game playing, I mean, even the best lose sometimes. I mean, exactly. Michael Jordan lost a game. Steph Curry misses a shot. Plenty of them. But they're out there playing. You know, we got a lot of people who are sitting in the bleachers who just heckle you the whole time. Right. <laughs> but there's only several of us that are out here on the court right. actually taking the shots, you know. Exactly. And, and, you know, I'm just not ashamed of it, man. I'm, I miss sometimes. But mm -hmm. when I miss, I learn, and I come back, and I practice, and I get back on that field, and I'm ready to play again. So, man, Awesome analogies, man. <clears throat> awesome analogies. So let's get into that because um, you're right. We did want to discuss. And, and what I come across, in, in whether it's in my business or just in my Walt, Jason, and you probably do as well, is that, um, people get discouraged often um, and, you know, how they view failure and things like that. And, and sometimes it can be discouraging and sometimes it can set people back or uh, kind of, you know, cause them to get out of the game. So, yeah, how do you define failure, you know, for yourself? What is failure? First off, man, uh, the reason people, uh, in my mind, uh, let failure uh, – uh, impact them more so than I feel like it should mm -hmm. is because their belief in themselves is highly dependent on people around them. Mm. Um, if if we could take a second real quick. Yeah. I have a Gary V quote on my wall. Yeah, let's let y'all take a and, look. And I'll read that for you. It says, I put zero weight in anyone's opinion about me because I know exactly who I am. Wow. Now, if that is actually the truth, then it doesn't matter, man. And like Gary V for me gave me a whole different way of thinking about loss. Mm -hmm. You know, when he gets out there and he's standing at the bus station with the whole crowd around him and he's letting people ask him questions and they're like, right. the fear of failure stops me from taking this step. He's like, what are you scared of? Yeah. You know, you're not scared of failing. You're scared of what people will think about you when you fail. Mm. So what are you really doing this for? Are you doing this for other people or are you doing it for you? If you're doing it for you, then take your loss. It's your loss. Right. It's not theirs. Exactly. So who cares? And that's why Gary Vee is so popular and so impactful because he, I don't, I've don't. i never seen him take an L, but it appears he would take one right in front of us and keep moving like it, like he didn't miss a beat. Right. Um, 
I don't see that guy miss many beats, man. He's uh, right. he's he's extremely he's unique. Guy, there's no doubt. But the the deal with failure is it, it, it's it's almost a social media makes it twenty times worse. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, we want to look polished, we want to look pretty, we want to look like we don't slip, like we don't fall, we don't have any bumps, bruises, cut scars. We just have it all figured out. We want to walk around like we got it all figured out, and that's there's an element of that that we like. I mean, we don't go and take family pictures uh, Mm -hmm. with our shirts off or our hair messed up or something, you know, like we want to be polished, but there's an element of humanity that is tucked under the rug when we approach life like that. And so I decided that I would take this walk in front of God and everybody Mm -hmm. and at least let people see where I slip and fall because I don't have it all figured out. Uh, And you can definitely learn from my experiences. Um, Definitely. Just don't, you know, be scared to fail and let that be a healthy fear that prevents you from uh, failing too much or attempting to fail. But uh, know that it's going to happen, you know, just be just be completely understood that you are going to fall. You're going to slip. You're going to mess up. And if you drive like I drive, Mm -hmm. which is fast. (laughs) <laughs> you, your, your, your failures are going to be big sometimes. I yeah. mean, you're going to fall all the way off, man. Yeah. Um, so if you're, if you're just interested in incremental growth, then you might deal with some incremental failure. Right. When you're interested in doubling and tripling and taking big, humongous leaps in growth, uh, then you better be prepared to, to bump your head and get some teeth knocked out along yeah, the way. <laughs> exactly. No, no doubt. And so, Jason, you know, as you speak to that, you know, many people, some that may be watching uh, this you know, podcast as we're recording on Facebook Live on Jason Daniels' page as well as on my own, and uh, those that are listening on the podcast, um, you know, a lot of times people that, that fear, you talked about it crippling. And sometimes people, they're afraid to maybe step out and kind of invest in themselves Mm -hmm. because they allow the fear of the discomfort and, like you said, the fear of what other people may say and think, family, friends, acquaintances, whatnot. And so I find that all the time. So for you, you what would you say is, you know, maybe a recent failure that you've experienced that you've had to overcome in your business? Um. Heck, which which one you want to pick? What can I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, let's let's talk about Titan Success Academy, man. When Absolutely. I launched that last summer, yeah, um, I had never been in an industry uh, where I had to really put myself out there and d- digitally knock on doors. You know, yeah. um, with Titans Electrical, the game is make myself available right. for people when they need me. I could go knock on doors all day and be like, hey, man, your light's working, but that's not very productive. Right. People don't care about an electrician until they need until one. They People need don't one. care about a plumber until they need one. Right. With these kind of services, you know, I can't push my way in your door and sell you something that you don't need. Yeah. It's it's when the need presents itself. And so with Titans Electrical, it's let's make sure you're I'm easily found. Yeah. You know, I want you to be able to find me as soon as you need me. I'm going to give you several different phone numbers. I'm going to give you a website. You're going to have a Facebook page. And as soon as you type in electrician, if you attach Memphis to that, man, I'm going to be on that first page. And so you're going to be able to find me when you need me. Right. Man, coaching ain't like that. Ain't right. nobody out here trying to find a coach. You got to, no. like, push your way in that door right. and make people understand your uh, your value. Yes. Um, And so it it's, it's business – but it's it's the yin and the yang of of the business, a service industry where people everybody needs an electrician at some point in time. Right. I mean, we all operate with electricity. We use electricity every day. Mm-hmm. So that's not a sell for me. I don't have to tell you, hey man, I got these things called lights, man. They're awesome. Right. You know, you can put that lighter away. You don't need your candle no more. You know, I don't have to sell you on that kind of right. stuff. But right, with, exactly. with with coaching. Um, there's a lot of people uh, that don't know the benefits of that. So I really right. underestimated uh, what I would have to get in and explain and talk about and push and basically sell. Yeah. You know, uh, It's not that I'm afraid of selling. I just was put in a position where I actually had to sell so. something that someone didn't know they needed. I had to show them the value. And so – that was a kind of a pullback and regroup and figure it out and, and move forward uh, yeah. in in that business. Yeah. Um, so definitely, 
that I would consider that a, a, a failure, a small failure, a, yeah. a, a scaling back, a retooling, a figuring it out, and then and then moving forward again. Yeah. Um, so. So how did you overcome that? Because that, that's the next thing is people always like to know, you know, well, yeah, how do you overcome that? So, you know, what you shared, you know, several people may be facing. Some of you may be facing that mm-hmm. now. And so how did you overcome that? You, of course, you it's a different value proposition mm-hmm. like you described with one business versus the other. Yes. And so how did you overcome that to be able to showcase and demonstrate, Jason, that value to yeah. uh, a potential And client? And so, you know, I step back. I've got several – uh, mentors that I talk to uh, that pour into me. I also read a, a lot of books. I'm a big uh, Grant Cardone guy. Yes. And so when I find myself just out of instinct acting in a with a defensive posture, mm-hmm. uh, I can go back to even my coach, Michael Burt, and, uh, and then put a little Grant Cardone on it. These people that I allow to speak into my life and say, right. man, how do we get past this obstacle? How do we beat this struggle? Grant Cardone will tell you more action, yeah. and Michael Burt will tell me to always act on the offense and be ready to pivot. Mm-hmm. And so if you get hit and you step back and you find yourself in a defensive stance, pivot and move back into offense. Mm-hmm. And so the practical answer there is I pull back, I put my thinking cap on, yeah, and I found a new way to push into the market, and it wasn't showing everybody that I'm here. Mm-hmm. But it was finding the people who need me and doing it on a on a smaller scale. Yeah. Like I assumed when I jumped in that it wouldn't be very long and I'd be coaching in masses. You know, I figured I'd be coaching rooms of thirty people or or whatever that that looked like to me. And we all know that once you get in business, right. it's way different than what you think about. So you always got to be ready to pivot. You got to be able to shift, make adjust, and make a move to keep pushing forward. Exactly. Um, so as I was kind of absorbing the information and realizing that the traction was a little slower, man, you grab the clients that you do have and you just pour into them, man. Give them all the value in the world. If you're planning on spending 10 hours on your business this week uh, to grow it, man, I turn around and put that time into those clients and just pump that value. Because more so than me telling you, hey, this is what I can do for you, cut me a check, Right. I'd rather the person that I've already done it for be the one telling you, hey, man, this is yeah. where I was at. This is what Jason did for me. Right. He helped me get through this obstacle. He helped pump me up in this stage of my life. He helped me uh, bust through this ceiling. Yes. He helped me get unstuck, whatever that case is. So I quit focusing on people that I didn't have and, and really kind of telling them or teaching them what value I could provide them and yeah. spent more time focusing on the people who already knew and really kind of pouring into them, the clients that I did have. Um, and we're about to relaunch on a different uh, platform and everything. So, Absolutely. Uh, we yeah, took a step exciting. back and we're yeah. moving back forward, man. There you go. And, you know, Jason, one of the things that really honed in on what you just said that I think would really help people is I think in building a business there's three areas that people can focus on, which is you can be product-focused, you can be customer focused or you could be competition focused. <clears throat> yes. And so in, in any of the three, you can find success, right? Um, but one of the things I really liked about you that where you've kind of, you've inspired me has been you have a great deep customer focus. I, th- I believe you've built your businesses off the platform of delivering value for the customer. And sometimes that's missed because it's easy – um, you can be competitor focused and you can have, you know, you can watch what others are doing and kind of stack rank yourself mm-hmm. against that. So, for example, for you, you could easily say you could place Titans Electrical up and you can take the other electrical companies and, and you can start spending a lot of time uh-huh. looking to see who's doing what and what they're investing in and, and that kind of thing. You could have success there. You could also be product focused. So, whether it's in, you know, a Titan Success Academy or whatnot, you could look at, the type of service, you know, offerings that you have or in your electrical business, uh, you know, you could have certain uh, service offerings that not necessarily a product, but, you know, could serve as that. But you can find success in all three. The unique thing about the customer focus is you can find success in all three of those areas by focusing in on the customer and Mm -hmm. delivering the value. And that's what I've really seen in your business over time is that, um, you know, and typically in your industry, you don't always find that. 
right? Yes. The focus on the customer. You find the focus on, you know, what you know the, the big lofty things that, you know, yes. sometimes you, people can come in and do. And so I say that to encourage those that are listening to the podcast is, you know, consider, you know, putting, you know, all in, like Jason said, go all out on the customer. And what's the customer experience? And when you do that, um, you find you know, warm leads and, and warm referrals because, as Jason said, um, people begin to re- refer you. So you don't have to then work so hard to try to position yourself. You, you allow the, the energy of what you put out there, that positive energy, with the experience. And that's one thing I loved of what you've done. Well, let me tell you where putting your eggs in the customer service basket will trump the others because no matter how good the product is, the product, if you're selling it on a mass scale or you're installing it to the masses, you, you're doing a lot of this. A lot of people have your product. You're, you're out here selling it. Right. And inevitably at some stage, somewhere, in someone's hands, that product is going to fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, it might not fail all over the place, but if I sell 100 of these things, whatever those things are um, – 99 of them might work perfect. One might fail. Yes. My customer service and the value I provide, if that doesn't fail, Mm -hmm. then when that product does, we're still good, man. They're not shooting off online talking about uh, Titans Electrical came over and put this up and it doesn't work (laughs) and, you know, and they're upset, you know. The relationship is what keeps that bond tight. So if I come over to your house and you're like, Jason, I want I want to trick out my kitchen. What do you right. got? <laughs> I'm going to come with the best products, man. So that's already yeah. off the top. We, they don't make a better product than what we install. We give you the best. But inevitably, if something is wrong with that product, it's your relationship that me and you have mm-hmm. that's going to ease your mind. You come in, flip that switch, and this doesn't come on. It's not, oh, they got over on me. It's, man... I know my man Jason, and he's going to get over here, and he's going to take care of this because things like this happen. Right. Same thing with the competitor mindset. Man, if I'm worried about my competition, then I'm not reaching for my potential. Right. I'm reaching for your potential, and your potential, I'm not speaking on you in in a bad light, but your potential might be way down here, and mine might be up here. Exactly. So you got me playing at a lower level. It's like sticking Michael Jordan out there to play with the college kids. You know, he's not reaching his potential. Right. And so if I'm playing against the competition, I'm not. I'm not reaching my potential. Exactly. Uh, And if I'm good at what I do, but I get there about playing against the competition. Then once I beat up the competition, then what? I'm no good anymore. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't whooped everybody. What's, right, exactly. what's left? Yeah, it's exactly. always the customer. The customer's always the last one left. And if you build that relationship, then the products can fall off, the consumers can fall off, and that customer service can still be there going. and stand tough. Man, dig that. So we're here with Jason Daniels, the president of Titans Electrical, uh, Titan Success Academy, home of the hustle. Um, one of the things, Jason, I always like to ask people, and I'd love to get your take on this, is take us back to the day um, where the failure was deep enough where you almost said, man, F this. Because <laughs> that's the day you know, where, and, and the reason I ask that question is because um, a lot of people reach that point. You know, they, they, when they get so discouraged, they say, man, F this, I'm going back to work. Man, F this, I'm going back, you know, to sell dope. F this, I'm going back to mama's house. But whatever it is, whatever their F it, and then the blank, fill in the blank after it. Right? So take us back to that day, you know, kind of what led you to that point. And then the big thing is how you overcame that. Because a lot of people, I think, are struggling with, you know, they have that feeling, they have that, that mood, but they haven't found the place that says, let me get up off the mat and keep going. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to answer that backwards. Okay. I'm going to start with the second the second part that you just asked. Yeah. And I'm going to take it with when things get hard in business. Okay, so when you start a business, your mentor or just your general knowledge about business should tell you that you're going to face things that right now at the beginning, you don't even know what those things are. Yeah. But it's going to be hard. No one has ever said, hey, start a business. It's going to be easy. (laughs) Start a business, man. You'll never have to work. Start a business. You'll get great night's sleep every night. You'll be able to go (laughs) vacation whenever you want. You'll never have to answer the phone. Life is fantastic. I don't know why everybody doesn't start a business. You don't get that. You get 
Starting a business is hard. Mom and dad don't want you to start a business because they're scared of your failure. Right. The people around you are like, man, now nah, you better just stick with that job. You got a pension plan. You got benefits. They're giving you a 401k. When you step out on your own, you're taking the hardest step that you're going to have to take in your business. The only difference is you don't know what that step entails. Right. So we can blindly take a step in faith that mm-hmm. we're going to go and we're going to do this. We're going to conquer the world with whatever product or service this is we offer, and we jump. But yeah. when you jump and things get tough, when it seems like there's no way out, when you're backed up in a corner and you're left with nothing to do but fight, yeah, you have to continually remind yourself why you started. Mm-hmm. And then when you – for me – I didn't know any business people when I first got into business. I didn't know anybody who owned a business. I didn't know anybody who was successful in business. Uh, And so I didn't really have a network of people who were experiencing the things that I was experiencing. But inevitably, you fall into that crowd. Right. You find some success, man. You're up here rubbing shoulders with your man over here. You know, you you find different people. Your friend group, your, your friends change, your environment changes. And so all of a sudden, you've got people who can talk to you and relate to you about these things that you're going through. And business is a puzzle that you're putting together in the dark. Mm. And you're slowly finding ways to turn those lights on and see where to put that next piece. But while you're still in the dark, you might be shoving a piece into a spot that it don't fit and you're shoving and you're shoving and you're shoving and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do here? Nothing's working out. Nothing's panning out. And I've been going through this the past six months. Mm Mm-hmm. 2017, I decided, hey, I'm going to go from $1.2 million a year to 2.4. And I'm not just going to blindly say, hey, this is what I'm doing. I got a plan. Right. And my plan is I'm going to bid more of these type projects. I'm going to take this contract here, which is going to pad our uh, bottom line. Mm-hmm. I'm going to invest more in our marketing. And so I stroked a $50,000 check. On January first of last year, mm-hmm. towards the just towards marketing, yeah. just so that more people could find me when they need me. Right. Um, I spent fifteen grand on a more robust piece of software that was going to help us track jobs and keep up with uh, every little detail uh, because we were going to experience a lot more than I could just keep in my head or right. or anything like that. And so I took the steps I felt necessary in order to. Put us in the best position to win. There you go. And I did take some some right steps, but there were some steps that I did not take that I didn't know I needed to take because I was putting that puzzle together in the dark. Mm-hmm. And it jumped up and it bit me, man. And and one thing that I've learned and that I will never do again is to sign a contract so big that if that money doesn't come through. It hurts, and it hurts bad enough that I might have to shut my doors. Yeah. And I did that last year. I signed one contract, two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I didn't get my first piece of that money for like four months, and then the last piece was like I had to go into litigation, and my lawyer was, you know, yeah. And I'm not suited going from one point two to two point four. That's a big chunk of your money when you're talking a quarter million dollars, right? And that's out there, yeah. Everything else has to be paid. You know, mm-hmm. my guys who install the products have to be paid. And so not only am I not getting my 250 but I'm spending 70 Yeah. And so all together, we're talking like three hundred twenty grand, right? upside down. Mm-hmm. And we just were not suited for that kind of impact. Now, the big carrot that was being dangled in my face was so attractive. Right. That I jumped on that contract because if it would have panned out, then it would have put over 180 profit in my in my pocket, and it would have only taken us 12 weeks to do it. Right? If you say 180 grand yeah, in 12, 12 weeks, hey, come on, man! Hey, you got you hey, got me listening. Hey, look, Let's yeah. do this. Hey, the math, the math. <laughs> but it did not go according to plan, right. like it does sometimes, right? Right. Andre tells us you can plan a pretty picnic, but you can't predict the weather, man. Right. And so there you go. I refuse to put all my eggs in that basket ever again, man. And I had that conversation with my coach like two weeks ago. Yeah. And he's like, he did that too. When he first broke out on coaching, his first contract's like $140,000. And then they snagged the contact, tracked away from him and four months in. Yeah. And all of a sudden he doesn't have any income. Oh, yeah. 
a similar situation, man. And so that could have put a nail in my coffin if I didn't have a firm belief in why I started this business, who I am, where I'm going. And even though I didn't know what it was going to take to get there, I still know where I'm going to end up. And you can't shake that belief in me. So when you start a business, if you're going to grow big and you're going to get out there and you're going to take big risks, be prepared to look yourself in the mirror and say, mm-hmm. I believe in you. I don't understand what's going on right now. Right. And I don't know how we're going to make it. But exactly. I'm going to get up. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to keep playing offense. And yeah. I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm going to win. Despite these failures, I'm still going to win. Yeah. There you go. Oh, man. I- I- incredible. And I-, I hope that you know those that are listening, those that are watching on Facebook Live, uh, save this. Because... Um, this is great content that Jason's sharing with you. And this is the kind of content that you get in coaching that people pay a good bit of money for. So, you know, you're really getting this free of charge uh, <laughs> from Jason. And, uh, you can, of course, you can send the bills over to t- uh, Titan Electrical if you want to send the check over. <laughs> um, Jason, let's talk about success. We talked about failure now. So let's talk about success because you know, that's always interesting and sometimes that's taken for granted. Because it's often uh, looked at that success should just be expected and, you know, people already kind of have in their mind what they think that looks like. But can you define success for us? Yeah, you know, uh, success is, is a is an ever-changing entity as well. Yeah. Uh, what I pictured as success, like I told you, I, I never had any business training. Uh, I was never even like a boss in any other company I worked in. So yeah. uh, I barely had a good handle on taking care of myself Mm -hmm. and making myself do things and discipline and all that sort of thing. And so when I start out a company, I start out by myself. I start adding pieces to the puzzle. So that picture of success uh, changes. Yeah. When I first started, my picture of success, like when I said I'm going to start a business and I'm going to go out and I'm going to win, I'd close my eyes and what it looked like to me was – the guy in the movie in the three piece suit with like three or four assistants Sitting with him. Around, well, right. you know, and they're walking down the hall and he's answering one phone and she's on the other. Hey, we got to be over there at noon and we got to, you know, and just business, business, business going crazy. Right. Um, I haven't experienced that yet. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> right. got to where I'm walking down the hall in a three piece suit and there's three or four people helping me field calls. Right. Um, <laughs> for some people, success is a dollar amount. Mm-hmm. For me, like we were talking before the podcast, man, I'm com- I'm fully comfortable operating in broke as long as I'm working towards my potential. So right. the next money doesn't really – I mean we want money, mm-hmm. but money doesn't define my success for me. Uh, success yeah. for me is are my customers happy? Are my employees happy? Mm-hmm. Do I feel like I'm servicing the people that I'm put in a position to serve well? Yeah. Uh, what would they say about me? What do my reviews look like? You know, if I got a million bucks, but my reviews online are, you know, this dude sucks, he scammed me, he took all my money, then Eventually I don't feel like that's you. success, you yeah, know? So, you. so it's not all tied to a dollar sign. It's um, my reputation, my integrity, um, what I'm giving back, what I'm doing for my community. Uh, I will feel like I'm successful at the end of my life mm-hmm. if, pe- if if more people than not come to my funeral and say, hey, that guy impacted me in a positive way. That yeah. guy helped me uh, when no one else would. Or that guy gave yeah. me his time when it didn't seem like he had it to give. Yeah. Um, that's success to me, the way I can define it today. Because – when you're outside, when you're sitting in the bleachers watching people who are playing the game right. of entrepreneurship, you always want to take success as a dollar amount. You mm-hmm. know, and when we play that, I mean, yeah. hey man, uh, Bill Gates is successful, Warren Buffett's successful. We know exactly what they got in their bank account, and that's why we deem them successful. But I right. guarantee you, if they feel successful, it's for a complete different reason. reason. It's exactly. because they invented something that impacted uh, the community or. Um, They've succeeded in reaching their potential, not so much filling their bank account. Right. And you notice if you ever hear any of them speak, whether you go online to hear any of those people that you mentioned or even some others, Jason, they never really talk about money. Yeah. They never do. If you ever hear Bill Gates get up and speak, he can get up and speak for two hours. He mm-hmm. won't say the word dollar, uh-huh. the word uh, 
you know, uh, money or cheese or none, none of the stuff that we, you know, the, the slang that we may use with money, he never says it once. Yeah. It's, right. a, it's, a, it's a tool. Yeah. I mean, so uh, you, you sit here and talk to me about Titan's Electrical, but I'm not up here talking about my hammer. I mean, the hammer's just another tool, you know. It's, right. Uh, as, you, as you grow and you learn and you invest in yourself and you realize that we may have grown up and, and our idea of money uh, was impressed upon us at a young age by our environment. So right. we think about money the way our parents thought about money or the way the kids around the neighborhood thought about money, whether we were getting it illegally or however money came into our lives, how we spend it, how we save it. Uh, how we burn up our credit, all those things uh, are impressed upon us at a young age, either intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, That's where we pick up that knowledge. And so the super successful people, the people we look back have achieved big things, Mm -hmm. um, they learned at a young age that money is is just a tool. It's a, it's a it's, tool. You don't. You're not a slave to the dollar, man. You find out ways to get dollars so that you can impact more people and you can do more things. And it just so happens to be that more dollars end up in your bank account when you follow that blueprint. Right. And you know, I've always said this, and, and this has been said and, and probably echoed before, is that money only makes people more of what they already are. Right. So if, if you're, you know, you're a bastard, <laughs> having a lot of money is just going to make you a bigger bastard, right? If, if you're a great hearted, you know, person, man, woman, whatever, your know, money just it tends to make you more of that. And so it only enhances, it provides options, as, as you know, Jason mentioned, which is, is definitely true. And then it, it only makes you a little bit more of what you already are. It, it doesn't really change my, uh, you know, I've had great years. Yeah, like Jason's mentioned, I've had great years where um, I did very well um, between my career and, and my own business. I've had years where I didn't. And if my wife were to get on here, she definitely would tell you uh, <laughs> about both, right? And so, it, it you know, I, I found that um, when I focused on money and, and you chase it, it's kind of to me, it's like the Roadrunner cartoon, right? You know, what, every Roadrunner cartoon starts out with the coyote chasing the Roadrunner, and he's really, he gets up close on the Roadrunner. And then all of a sudden, what does the Roadrunner do? Beep, beep. And he takes <laughs> off, right? And he goes so fast away from him that the road comes up off the ground. And what does the coyote do every time? His eyes fall out on the ground because <laughs> he's like, what the hell? And because it took off from him. So this he is, got the piano that he's dropping off the, yeah. the cliff on him or something. Yeah. And you notice he's smart. He he orders from Acme. So he, you know, for Amazon, <laughs> right? You had Acme, right? So that's where it came from. And you from. can just get some dynamite in the yeah, mail, man. Yeah. Out in the desert. Yeah, out in the desert, right. You know, no mailbox, no address, no nothing. I mean, completely innovative, right? You know, there are no stores around. So but a that, grand piano showed up on yeah. that cliff. And, 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 TNT, anything that he wanted, any tools that he wanted. He could order from Acme well before. This is 60 years before Amazon, right? Amazon owes Acme some credit, man. Yeah, they do. They, they yeah. were the first yeah, ones that Jeff, had this idea. Get Jeff Bezos <laughs> on the phone, man. Um, but, yeah, so what happens is is it's the same thing. He, he's chasing this one bird that if he caught it, how much meat is on the roadrunner? As skinny as I don't know what, right? If he did caught it and eat it. Yep. Right? Then what? There's yep. more beak than anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, there's only that one. It's not like there's a thousand of them running around, right? So he's chasing this one road runner, and he, he's taking all this heat, right, and he's, and all this pain to catch one road runner. That's what happens when you chase money. Is you're, it's, The money's just like that road runner. You're always going to be running after it. You're going to be falling off of cliffs. You're going to have boulders falling off you. You're going to lay some bird seed out. It's going to eat your bird seed. You're going to wonder why the hell the boulder didn't fall on them. You run into the boulder, the boulder falls on you. <laughs> right? It's, it, it, it mirrors you know, the coyote cartoon. That's what I, I share with people is that, you know, you, yes, you, you, money creates the options and the things like that. You want to pursue it, but don't spend so much time chasing money or using that as your value system. Um, you know, when I, when I played uh, basketball, a professional basketball player in practice – could miss every shot. You take Ray Allen. He could sit and miss every shot in practice. But he's satisfied if he's got good form, right, and he's squared up to the basket. He knows that in the game he's going to make it. And on the other side, sometimes professional players, they could be making every shot in practice but have concerns over their jump shot. And you think, well, if you sat there and watched Ray Allen and he shoots 500 threes and makes 450 of them, and you're like, well, damn, right? <laughs> but he could be not happy about that. 
right? Because he said he might come down and said, man, my elbow wasn't in. I wasn't balanced. Sure, I was making the shot. But in the game, when the game's on the line, because like Jason said earlier, uh, in terms of watching entrepreneurs, it's just like if you go to an arena. There are 20,000 people in the arena watching, but there's only 10 players on the floor. Yeah. Right? Five for each team. So Jason's exactly right. It, it's a limited number of people that are actually in the game. There's way more fans watching. And then think of all the people watching on TV, right, if it's a televised game or radio. So it it, it all speaks to, you know, kind of what we're talking about today, folks, which is um, don't be afraid to fail. Um, em- embrace success. Don't be modest or, or uh, shun success either. But, you know, keep a, a good balance Build your network, connect with the right people. Like Jason said, you know, if we show me your circle and I'll show you you, you know, that's that's essentially what it is. Show me who you're around, who you interact with, who you, who you text, who you inbox, who inboxes you, uh, who you devote that time to. And I should that shows you you. And I like to uh, to add one point. I want to touch on this. Uh, yeah. For those that may be thinking about getting into business and the thought of that seems unnatural, understand that you've been conditioned to think that way about owning your own business. Mm. The 40-hour work week has barely been around 100 years. With the Industrial Revolution, uh, with uh, you know mass producing of cars, uh, Anything of mass production that required people on an assembly line, right. that pretty much brought in the 40-hour work week mm-hmm. of which our parents were raised. And mm-hmm. so we were raised, and when you're a kid or young or you don't dive into history or put it into this context, you think everybody's always worked for somebody else, which just isn't true. If right. you go back a couple hundred years, let's pretend we're all born in 1800, and mm-hmm. we're not talking about the – the social injustices that could be going on at the time, but we're just right. speaking on uh, what you do for a living. It's always dictated by what your parents do. Mm-hmm. If your dad is a blacksmith, then you're a blacksmith, and you start learning to be a blacksmith when you're five years old. Right. Uh, if your dad uh, herds and trades cattle, then that's what you're doing. If if you're uh, if y'all are farmers. And you're growing crops and trading those or selling those at market, then that's what you do. Yeah, it's only it's it's very new. This forty hour work week, this four hundred one k, this corporate way of living. Right. And I'm mm-hmm. not knocking anybody for going the corporate route or working for someone else, but I do want you to understand that they can change the game on you at any time. They can take your pension away. Yeah, Someone can buy out the company that you work for and all of a sudden those benefits you had don't exist anymore and you're at the end of your work life. Right. And you depended on what they provided for you. I just want to encourage everybody to think about providing for yourself and preparing for your future yourself and don't depend on corporate America to take care of you because they'll change the game in a heartbeat, man. Hey, hey, listen, and that podcast is coming, folks. <laughs> Tell me, but, you know, so like Jason shared his story, I, I will soon be sharing uh, mine and uh, some other folks will be sharing this on this podcast. So, Jason, any kind of final words? I know we had our, our boy Ojinga jump on, uh, Ojinga Carr. He's got a great event coming up. I know you're, you're involved in that and, and a slew of other things. Yeah, so uh, Ojinga has uh, has blessed me with the opportunity to speak at his I Dream, I Achieve event. It's going to be March 8th, 9th, and 10th. I think it's a three-day event, and it's here in Memphis. And let me tell you something. I travel to go to these conferences. I'm going to yeah. Vegas in two weeks uh, to Grant Cardone's 10X uh, event, uh, which will be chock full of amazing speakers, uh, a bunch that you've heard of, New York Times bestsellers. And, and that's where I go learn and have people pour into me so that I can come back and, and teach and apply to my business and my life. Absolutely. Um, but Ojinga is doing that right here in Memphis. And so when I met Ojinga, it was at his last event. Um, found him through LinkedIn. He sent me a message, invited me out. So I went and, and just stopped by to check out what he was doing. And let me tell you, man, I was blown away mm. by the people he had brought to this event. They were all from out of town. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bunch of Memphis cats sitting around talking, which right. is nothing wrong with that, but it just showed me how he was willing to invest in this city by bringing different ideas right. that weren't different cultivated mindset. in this 
uh, market. Absolutely. And so we had someone from Indianapolis and someone from South Carolina, and you know, and those people he had those people flown in to give these presentations. So you know, if you're bringing people from out of town. They've got something to say. It's not somebody you just grab from around the corner. Which right. for this event, I think I'm the one that he's grabbing from around the corner. I'm the I'm the Memphis dude at this event. Right. But for anybody watching or listening, man, find me on Facebook. Find Ojinga. Find out about this event. If you're interested in investing in yourself, if you're investing or interested in leveling up, but you don't have the money to take you out to Vegas and, and, and put you up for a week like I'm about to do in two weeks. Man, if you want to start small, we're going to start right here in your own backyard, and it's going to be a three-day event teaching you and answering questions about business. And so if you're starting your own business or you're trying to scale your business or you're just interested in putting some more tools in that toolbox, you know, find out some information on this event, get in touch with us, and uh, let's get you a seat in there, man. I'll be speaking uh, on that Saturday. I'll also be on a panel, I believe, on Friday, and we'll be fielding questions and just helping the community, man. It it warms my heart to know that somebody's yeah. doing that here in Memphis because for so long I've sat back and watched other cities just take our shine, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Everybody I, always I steals Memphis' yeah. shine. <laughs> yeah, they do. I, I, in, in all phases, too. Business, uh, music, Sports. entertainment, sport, everything. <clears throat> uh, you know, people take and uh, capitalize off of Memphis culture and, and things that are developed and uh, cultivated right here, as you said. So I plan on being there. Uh, you should, too, as Jason said. So reach out to either of us. Reach out to Ojinga Car. Uh, inbox him, you know, get your tickets, make the investment in yourself. Jason just spoke on it. I did as well. Make the investment in yourself. You know, oftentimes we invest in material things. You know, if you go to the liquor store, you like Hennessy, you go drink a whole bunch of it, you go piss it out, you go fall out, you know, fall asleep, <laughs> you go wake up with a hangover and you go do it again. Right. There's, you, there's nothing that you gather from that. And I like Hennessy, you know, but listen, make the investment in yourself if you want to achieve and position yourself for success. Uh, Jason, thank you so much, my man. This has been an honor. It's been epic for me, uh, you know, personally and professionally. Um, you've been great for me and my business, man. And Absolutely. Anytime I've been able to call on you, you've delivered. I've, I've had Jason speak to sales teams before that, you know, even now to this day are still asking you know, how if he could come back, you know, <laughs> and things like that. So, man, it's phenomenal. Yeah, you know, any parting words? You know, how can people get in touch, um, you know, with your, your companies and do business with you? Man, you can, you can find us online. You can find us on Facebook. We're Titans Electrical. Um, anybody who's watching or listening uh, that is not a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, that's where I'm highly engaged. Uh, send me a friend request. Send me a message. If you uh, need any kind of uh, elaboration on anything that you've heard today uh, or any of this speaks to you in your business and you just like to have another conversation about it, uh, I'm an open book. I'm here to help you uh, in any way that I can. And if you can benefit from what we're putting out here, uh, then me and Ron can consider this a win. So find yes. me on Facebook. I'm Jason Daniels. Uh, look us up online. Uh, the companies are Titans Electrical, Titan Success. Uh, but Facebook's where I'm highly engaged. So find me on Facebook and let's start there. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, thank you so much. Listen, we're, you know, I'm extremely excited. You should be excited too. 2018 is going to be phenomenal. You're going to win this year. And when you face adversity, because it's going to come too, you're going to look adversity and you're going to kick it right in the stomach and you're going to keep going. I'm Ron Brooks. This is Jason Daniels. Thank you so much. Listen, on tomorrow, I'll be back with Wayne Moody of Berkshire Hathaway. We're going to talk some real estate. Listen, have a phenomenal day. Be your very best and, and give it all that you have. Peace. Thank you guys for watching. 